Hey, I'm Orsi and welcome to the fourth episode about trading games in HTML5. So if you haven't watched the last episode, then I would highly recommend you to do so by clicking the annotation on the screen. So in the last episode, we managed to do this. So it's a bunch of letters that bounce in a Canva. And this is the code for it. Long story short, we got our player, which is an object, our enemy, our other enemies, and a update loop that um, draw them every single frame. So before getting started with this episode, I just want to add a little thing into our code because right now how it goes is that we have our Canva, which is the box where we draw things. And what we do is that we fill text. So CTX is the Canva and we fill text, but we never actually delete um, the text. So as you can see, um, it gets pretty messy pretty quickly. So what I will do is to simply ask you to um, copy paste this line. So CTX clear rack. So this means um, remove the content in the Canva. Now you need to specify where exactly, what exactly you want to remove. We want to remove, this is the X, this is the Y. So we want to remove from the top left position all the way to the bottom right. So at the width and the height, if you remember correctly, we set those um, constant, so I can width of 500. So there we go. So if we save and we check it back, now we got our letters and it's clear to see where they are exactly. Okay, so now our goal is to make a list of enemies like I mentioned in the last video. And to do that, we will need to group variables. And if you remember correctly, when we want to group variables, we use objects. But in theory, in reality, there are many ways to group um, elements. So I've mentioned the object in the last video, but there is actually a lot of different ways. The two main ones are object and arrays, but you could also use trees, you could use heap, you could use listed list, you could use doubly listed list. So there's a bunch of ways to, um, to structure data, but the two main ones are arrays and objects. So now I'll try my best to explain the difference between the two. It's really a hard topic. Um, so first there's the arrays, which is an ordered list. So you want to use arrays when the order is important. And how it works basically is that, let's say that you um, have the list of the largest countries in order. So, well, the, the values is not really important, but let's say that this is our array. So it starts with a bracket. We got our first element, second element, and third element. We want to know which one is the biggest, then we can quickly access it. We just say, hey, it's array zero. By the way, this is um, index zero. This is index one. This is how it works. I will cover arrays in another video um, because it's a quite tricky subject. There's a lot of crazy stuff you can do with arrays, but it's ordered. So this is the first element. This is the second element. Um, and accessing something can be a little bit tricky. So let's say that you know that USA is the biggest one, so you can access USA with zero. But now I add a new element that is called, I don't know, China. And now all the position are all messed up because now USA is one and Canada is two. So the order, the position can change, the index length with an element can change at any time. Well, when you add an element or you remove one. Um, so you need to keep that in mind. So objects in the other end do not take into consideration the order. So you will want to use that when the order is not important and when you can put a unique key on each of the different values because you access the value by using this key. So let's say that you simply want to um, have the list of the countries and the size, you would be using an object. So it would be object with the attribute USA, which would be, let's say, 1000, Canada, 500, Russia, 250. And you could access it really quickly by um, typing this. And even if I add a new one, let's say China, which is 2000, I can still access the data about USA directly with the object.USA, which would not be the case with the array. Um, so for our game, what we will be using for the enemy list is an object because we don't really care about the order. If it's the first monster that has been um, spawned or the second one, it doesn't really matter. And we will be removing and adding a lot of them. So it's impossible for us to keep track of where in the array it is if we remove and add new stuff pretty quickly. We want to be able to access it really quickly like that. So let's just remove all this. So what I will do is just add a create a new variable that will be an empty array. Its name will be enemy list. Now we got our first enemy 
And if you remember correctly, we can simply put the the ID that we want. Let's say that will be E1 and we simply say A. Now it's equal to enemy. And then we can add this one and then say A, it's enemy 2. Something like this. So one important thing to do when you add a new element inside an object with a specific key is to add this key in the list of the attribute of that object. For example, our enemy, we decided that its key was E1. Well, let's add the attribute ID with the value E1 in this object. And let's do the same with the enemy too. So now if we go down um, right here and we say update entity enemy, we can replace enemy with this. So enemy list E1. This will be exactly equivalent. And right there, we could simply put enemy list Two. So let's just save and check how it looks. So let's refresh. And as you can see, nothing has changed in our code. So now you're probably wondering why we have done all this if we are still going to need to copy paste a line and change it for let's say E3. Well, don't worry, there's an explanation because um, objects has a very special property and it's the um, ability to be um, iterated. And in order to iterate through a list, so go through every single element inside a list, you use um, this notation and the list right there. So what this does is that we will go through every single key in the object enemy list. And as you can probably tell, we have two keys. The first one is E1 and the second one is E2. So if we put this right there, key, what will happen is the first time that we will, the, when the computer will reach this, it will say, okay, I need to loop through all the keys in enemy list. What are the keys? The keys are E1 and E2. So what it will do is that it will do this, will replace the variable key by E1. So it will call this function. This will become enemy one, enemy and it will update enemy. And the second time it goes through, it will replace key by E2, replace all this by enemy two, and we will update the second one. So one thing to know is that the name of this variable, so var key can be pretty much anything. It could be ASD and you just need to make sure to replace all the keys with ASD. It could be um, GGG, JJJ. And here, JJJ, it does not really matter. Obviously, this one does matter because it's the one you will be looping through. So if you put anything, the computer will say, hey, this is not a list. It does not work. So I'll just put key. By convention, it's either key or the variable i for index. So now I guess I can remove this part. And if I want to add a new enemy, all I have to do is to copy paste this and um, change the name for enemy three change maybe the X and speed and stuff, the, change the ID and change the key being used right there. And if we update and check it out, there we go. We got our player and three enemies bouncing around. So I guess that's pretty much it about um, this episode. I hope you liked it. And don't forget to click the annotation on the screen to go check out the next episode.